thank you, Peter, for the introduction. Actually, I think this makes uh, my life very easy because uh, you already presented, actually, which is the objective of Work Package 6. And this is one of the first steps that we want to take into that direction to develop the criteria uh, for the diseases to be studied. Thereafter, a first selection of diseases and a third objective will be a framework for the continuous addition of new diseases based on the developments in the, in the field. Now, today, in this morning, I will just give you an example. And once again, there is no decision taken about the type of disease and so on, but the only thing that I would like to make the point, and together with, uh, with Jan uh, a little bit later, is that the approaches that we have um, uh, discussed the last one and a, uh, one and a half days or so, uh, that were presented mainly in other types of diseases, such as uh, cancer, are also very much uh, applicable also to infectious diseases. And infectious diseases is a very important um, uh, pathology, of course, because it's one of the most important, uh, it's one of the most important causes of, of death. Of course, you would see here on number four, but actually if you see also later on on I, uh, number nine and ten are also infections, so if you add all of them, you get very close to, to what is happening with other very important uh, uh, causes of mortality, such as ischemic heart disease, stroke, cancer, and so on. There are many challenges to infection. So uh, in the 60s and 70s, people thought, well, we are done with the infections. We have the antibiotics. What has remained are just some flukes of a little, uh, 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 of some small infections that we will eliminate uh, very soon. But we could not be more wrong. There are major challenges due to infections, which uh, mount now a resurgence due to the antibiotic resistance, which is spreading. You can see here only between two now, uh, in, in, in five years or so, the spread of antibiotic resistance in Europe, uh, also the globalization, the migration, spreading of infections is much quicker than it used to be. There are major pandemics among which, of course, HIV pandemics globally, there are emerging new pathogens every time. Every, uh, every um, uh, decades we will have always, for example, influenza pandemics and so on. And we are using in the, in the hospitals more invasive uh, treatments with, which have an immunosuppressive effect on, on our host defense. So because of that, the number of infections in the hospitals, also in the developed countries, is, is rising. In the last 200 years, there were major uh, successes for the treatment of infections because infections were by far number one of the most important pathologies in human history. If you put together how, how many people died of infections compared with all the other uh, diseases put together during history, infections comes very easily number one. But hygiene, vaccination, antibiotic therapy, and later uh, intensive care therapy for the very severe patients in the hospitals are the pillars which uh, realize a dramatic decrease in the mortality due to infections. However, in the last 20 or 30 years, the mortality due to severe infections, even in very developed countries, did not decrease, basically. What is the next level for the treatment and infections? And we believe that only a personalized approach to the treatment of, of the patients um, uh, can help us. And this can go into two directions, in personalized host-directed therapy, um, uh, which is basically immunotherapy, but which should be uh, adjusted to the needs of each of the patients, and personalized treatment of complications in chronic infections, for example, uh, HIV. I will just give you an example, and unfortunately I see that something went wrong with my slides a little bit, but uh, doesn't matter. Um, actually, what it what it has been done always in terms of immuno immunotherapy, for example, for sepsis, which has been tried several, uh, several times, tens of times actually in the last 30 or 40 years, to identify a pathway which is uh, distorted in, in the patients with, uh, with, uh, anti uh, with uh, sepsis, and then treat all the patients with an immunomodulator. And there were many trials done with anti-cytokines, TLR4 antioxidants, and so on, which cost tens of billions of dollars, and we which were all failures, basically. What it has been seen, however, is that this approach will never, uh, will never be successful. So we need a 
proper stratification of the patients, also with infections like we do, for example, for cancer. Because sepsin in itself is not a disease, is not an infection, is a syndrome, and it is caused by many different types of, uh, of, uh, of infections, many roots, many pathogens. And for example, this is a study which has done stratification of patients based on transcriptomic profiles by the group of Tom van der Poel in Lancet Respiratory Medicine. And these are here different uh, um, immunological and pathophysiological pathways which are different modulated by four major endotypes of, uh, of patients with, uh, with sepsis. And when people assessed actually the mortality of the patients which are stratified based on these endotypes, you can see, for example, that one of these endotypes is much more, uh, has a much, uh, much increased um, uh, mortality due to sepsis. And only through identifying the pathways which are responsible for the higher mortality in this small subgroup of patients, we can approach, uh, approach uh, the disease through an immunotherapeutic uh, um, uh, 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 method. So what we believe that we need to do in all infections, and I will move in a moment to HIV, that actually we need to do classifications, stratifications of the patients, either supervised based on, uh, on immunological or clinical data that we, uh, that we have, but probably even better, unsupervised uh, classification based on, on omics approaches that would identify the endotypes, and each of these endotypes will need to be uh, uh, treated differently through immunotherapy, and we believe that this is the only way uh, to go further. Now, I move very quickly to one example that I would like to give, and of course, I cannot go in much depth due to time, but I would like to discuss with you uh, briefly the case of, of, um, of HIV infections, which is a, which is a modern, uh, modern plague, basically, in some countries, uh, um, in, especially in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, the HIV positivity reaching 30%, but being a lot of, causing a lot of problems also in the, in the developed world. Fortunately, a success uh, uh, therapeutic story was uh, available in the last 20 years when potent antiviral drugs against HIV virus have been identified. That being said, however, the mortality due to, uh, due to uh, HIV remains higher in, in, in the patients infected than in the general populations. And we would like to, uh, to decrease that and improve that. And how do, what is one of the approaches that we think is necessary uh, to achieve that? We have initiated uh, in the Netherlands together with, uh, with collaborators from, uh, from University of Bonn in Germany and from the Broad Institute in, in, um, in um, uh, Boston, the Human Functional Genomics Project, which actually tries to understand the factors, genetic, non-genetics, microbiome, metabolome, and so on, which influence on the one hand the immune responsiveness of the, of the individuals in health and disease, and on the other hand, how is that influencing susceptibility and severity of various uh, diseases. And we have more than 10 diseases now uh, being studied, but uh, today I would like to give you the example of the, uh, of the HIV infections. And we started with a proof of principle uh, study in 200 uh, individuals who are treated with HIV. And in which we aim to identify biomarkers of viral reservoir because, uh, unfortunately, even with the best treatment available, viruses still are able to, uh, to, um, uh, to, to remain alive in, in the body of the patients. And only the elimination of this viral reservoir will be able to cure, hopefully in the future, the patients. Um, to identify the factors which influence also HIV complications and subsequently to identify targets for, for diagnosis and, and therapy. So, how are we doing this study? And again, I think uh, some things went wrong with, with some of the figures, but anyway, very simple. We do very uh, uh, very in-depth char phenotypic characterization of the patients, both at the clinical level and immunological level. And then we assess genomic, transcriptome, microbiome, metabolome, and epigenomic factors, which we try, 
we try to intersect to understand how are the immunological responses and the course of the uh, patients with uh, HIV therapy, how is that uh, uh, taking place. And we do that at different levels, and I will give you the examples of these various levels. A first level is just, for example, to do one type of assessments and correlate that with uh, complications, with immunological uh, responses, for example. In this, for example, we have performed targeted proteomics of circulating markers and, uh, and, uh, and um, stimulated immune uh, cells uh, to identify the inflammatory markers which are associated with an active HIV infection. And this is just, a, uh, just a, a, an example of the most important of these factors. In the, in the same way, we can identify, and we have identified now, independent loci which influence, uh, which influence uh, the, uh, the cytokine responses or the uh, severity of the, uh, of the complications in these patients. We have identified metabolic factors which are influencing this and so on. However, this is not enough, of course. We would like to, uh, to improve the, uh, the, uh, the knowledge and what is happening in, uh, of what is happening in the HIV infection by combining this, uh, uh, this, uh, this knowledge. For example, uh, in, in such dimension, uh, second dimensions in which we combine data sets, for example, we try to understand the correlation between different factors, correlations between different immunological factors, correlation between metabolic factors and immune system in HIV uh, vaccinated individuals versus, uh, versus healthy um, uh, volunteers, uh, between uh, metabolites and genetics in these individuals. And I will give you just one example. This is, this is the correlation matrix, how, for example, immune cells which are stimulated with various pathogens which are very relevant for the HIV infections, how do these responses correlate with each other? And without going into detail because we do not have time, you can observe, so these are various types of cells stimulated with different types of, of, of uh, uh, relevant pathogens for HIV infections. And we can see that, for example, uh, uh, there is a very strong correlation between the myeloid cell responses to various types of, of um, of pathogens for, uh, for release of pro-inflammatory cytokines, which is in, these are healthy individuals, and this strong correlation, however, basically almost disappears in the patients with HIV. So the normal networks of communications between cells at the terms of cytokine production, release of uh, uh, prostaglandins and mediators which co make uh, uh, pos possible communication between cells is apparently uh, lost or broken in the, in the patients with HIV. However, we do identify suddenly novel, uh, novel associations and no novel networks which are formed in disease. And we, uh, we are trying to understand these networks Networks. What are the factors influencing them? Are, they, are these networks important for the complications in these diseases? And we have some, uh, some very exciting uh, novel discovery that that is the case. And a third level of, of trying to understand what is happening with HIV infections, we are doing in collaborations with, with the colleagues at, uh, at, uh, at Limas at, uh, at, uh, at the University of Bonn, in which we try to combine these data sets that we already have also uh, with assessment at, at the single cell level. So blood for all these individuals will be, uh, uh, will be assessed both with, uh, with advanced uh, flow cytometry, but also uh, both with bulk and single cell uh, sequencing to understand also whether within the cell populations that we know are responded differently or, are, uh, of, or have a disturbed uh, network, whether there are indeed cell subpopulations which are very important in, in the disturbances uh, which happens. And, and thus we want to integrate the immune functions with genomics, metabolomics, and, and uh, 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 facts analysis and, and single cell uh, sequencing. Finally, in, in, we want to combine all these, all these data sets. For example, on the level of single cell pathogen induced transcriptome, to combine it with disease causing genes, but also with metabolites, also with, uh, with mi microbiome factors, with epigenetic assessments 
to, to assess uh, disease causal networks, basically, which are disturbed in, in, in HIV, and thereafter identify the targets in which we want to, uh, to go for, uh, for di diagnostics for patient stratification on the one, one hand, to identify the patients where these pathways are the most uh, disturbed, and then for target uh, identification. Of course, in this, we also need, uh, need uh, uh, much higher numbers than the 200 patients that, that we have uh, employed in our first proof of principle study. And here we need and we, we have to team uh, um, and, and collaborate uh, closely uh, to, uh, to pharmaceutical industry, to Big Pharma, which has the capacity to help us uh, to, to realize that. And for that, I would like to invite uh, my colleague Jan van Lunsen, with whom we started a collaboration now to do all these assessments, not in 200, but in 2,000 individuals with HIV infections in which we want to, uh, to identify these, uh, uh, these targets for diagnostics and therapy. Thank you.